amusement parks, designed for fun, for entertainment, for thrills. A place where one expects to come to forget about the worries of the everyday world and leave their pain behind. But imagine, if you will, a world in which a roller coaster was designed that is so painful that it is more effective as a torture device than an amusement device. Or maybe that world is not as far away as you think. Vekoma was founded in the Netherlands in 1926 by Hendrik Opetveld. The company originally manufactured machinery for agriculture and mining purposes under the name Veld Koning Machine Fabrik. It was in 1967 that the company would enter the amusement industry under its abbreviated name, at first constructing portable Ferris wheels. Their first steps into the roller coaster game would come in the late 1970s, when they entered a partnership with American manufacturer Arrow Development, licensing their already established track design for roller coaster projects in Europe. Vekoma would use their slightly modified track to design their coasters, while Arrow would supply the trains. Their first coasters would be their answer to Arrow's corkscrew, the Bayern Curve model. These coasters were similar to Arrow's corkscrew, but were designed to be portable. The first three models would open at Wallaby, Belgium, and at Germany's Movie Park and Holiday Park in 1979. These coasters would evolve into Vekoma's Mark 1200 looping model, and its track design would go on to directly influence the design and production of two of Vekoma's most popular models, designed by one of their most influential designers, Peter Clerks. The first of those was the Boomerang, a simple compact shuttle coaster design that was first produced in 1982, and today there are over 50 operating worldwide. It was also at this time that Vekoma started using computer-aided design software, becoming one of the first manufacturers to do so, drastically reducing the amount of time it took for the company to design and construct their coasters. With their newfound success, Vekoma started manufacturing their own trains, giving them total independence from Arrow, and they never looked back. Their first steps out of Arrow's shadow were the Junior Coaster model, which was met with immediate success and has sold over 70 models worldwide. Their new computer-based design process and their affordable and compact models being popular with parks of all sizes allowed Vekoma to sell hundreds of roller coasters, quickly populating the globe and becoming the single most prolific manufacturer in the world in terms of number of coasters built. This massive success would then be followed by the development of yet another model utilising the Mark 1200 track design in the early 1990s, this one with a little bit more innovation attached. At the time, engineers Walter Bollinger and Claude Mabillard, having founded their own company Bollinger & Mabillard, or B&M, had been working with Six Flags Great America General Manager Jim Wintrode and engineer Robert Mump to produce a roller coaster that would be the first of its kind. On May 9, 1992, Batman the Ride opened to the public, the world's first inverted coaster. With five inversions and a forceful layout designed by Werner Stengel, it was met with immediate praise for its innovation and unique forces with unprecedented intensity. The very next year, Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey would get a clone, and five more B&M inverted coasters would open over the next two years. It was clear that the inverted concept was taking off. However, Batman the Ride had cost Six Flags $7 million to construct, the single largest investment into a roller coaster that Six Flags had ever made up to that point. So while parks like Six Flags, Cedar Point, California's Great America and Alton Towers were frothing at the mouth to get their hands on one, it was clear there was a market for a more compact and affordable inverted coaster for parks who didn't have millions of dollars just sitting around to splash. And who better to design it than Peter Clerks of Vekoma, who was already making his living by developing the world's most affordable and marketable thrill coasters. So in 1994, Vekoma's answer to the inverted coaster genre was first constructed at Wallaby Holland. This is El Condor, the world's first Vekoma suspended looping coaster, SLC. The SLC features a compact layout with five forceful inversions spread over what was initially 662 meters of track. It hits a top speed of 80 kilometers an hour, and the initial reviews were terrible. The initial reviews of Vekoma's inverted coaster were that it was a painful, head-banging monstrosity of a ride. 
In stark contrast to B&M's glass smooth yet ultra intense masterpiece, Vekoma had replicated all of the intensity with none of the comfort. And there are a lot of reasons why the SLC was immediately unpopular. El Condor itself was marred with a few problems that newer SLCs don't continue to face today. Shortly after opening, the ride began to run into issues with the prototype layout. The ride was designed to operate with three trains with 10 cars each. However, very shortly after opening, the trains on El Condor were shortened to eight cars due to serious operational problems, and only one more SLC would ever be produced with the prototype layout, T2 at Kentucky Kingdom, before a new layout was conceptualized with reprofiled track to address these problems. The most major adjustment was the shape of the first drop, which was extended into a banked turn underneath the final turn instead of going straight into the first inversion. This increased the speed of the first drop, allowing the 10-car trains to operate as intended, but also smoothened the approach into the rollover, which was very abrupt and far too forceful for most riders' comfort on the prototype model. The new layout also adjusted the approach into the inline twists for comfort reasons and made minor adjustments to the final turns. The newly adjusted 689 meter standard layout was ready for the next installation at Japan's Nasu Highland Park the very next year, as well as an extended layout with a helix for Australia's Warner Brothers Movie World. So did the ride improve after the adjustments made to the prototype? No. Vekoma's ability to offer their inverted model at a cheaper price than any other manufacturer meant the SLC was immediately quite popular, selling seven installations in just its second year. But all seven of those were immediately met with the same criticisms. They were rough, painful, and aggressive rides. And the main culprit is the trains. The first problem with the SLC trains is exactly what was suggested by the immediate adjustments made to El Condor. The trains are the wrong size for the elements. Initially, the 10-car trains were particularly awful for this problem, even after adjustments were made to the prototype layout. And the problem is most evident in the rollover and the sidewinder. B&M's elements are all designed to smoothly lose and regain their pace throughout the train, resulting in a comfortable ride experience no matter where you sit. While the ride experience and the forces will differ depending on whether you're closer to the front or the back, the forces are calculated and designed to be smoothly and consistently applied. But Vekoma's inversions in particular are not as elegant. The speed of the train drops and picks up while riders are at different stages of inversion and often traveling through sharp transitions, resulting in sudden and uncomfortable jolts in various seats. For example, the front row loses speed while rolling through the rollover, resulting in a sudden loss of speed that jolts riders forward into their restraint while they twist. Meanwhile, the back row has the opposite problem, picking up speed while still twisting on the exit of the rollover, resulting in a sudden pull by the restraint that is equally painful. Parks have attempted to mitigate this issue by continuing to operate with the shortened 8-car trains, but the problem persists because it is the inexact design of the elements that causes the problem. Even then, no matter how much a park shortens its train or retracts the elements, the ride's roughness would persist, and this is because of the second problem with the SLC trains, the wheel assemblies. Watch the wheels closely on your local SLC and you'll see the guide and upstop wheels often lose contact with the track. This, along with track maintenance issues and inexact manufacturing, is what causes the SLC's poor tracking and rough ride experience. Vekoma's SLC trains were a very simple but interesting design. Since the track was essentially just an inverted version of their Mark 1200 track, they did the same thing with the trains, simply inverting the chassis and constructing the new rigid train design underneath. The SLC wheel assembly, therefore, is identical to the Mark 1200 wheel assemblies. Given the reputation that Vekoma's loopers already had for some element of roughness, it should come as no surprise that the SLCs would track particularly poorly, except with a far more intense layout, this effect was amplified even further. But certainly the worst problem with the SLC trains, and the problem that made all of those previous issues even worse than they should have been, was the restraints. Vekoma made several efforts to redesign the SLC restraints to resolve the complaints of riders, and until very recently, they never got it right. The initial design was a large, hard, foam over-the-shoulder restraint. However, these were met with a couple of serious problems. First, and most obviously, head banging. 
on any ride with sudden lateral transitions and over the shoulder restraint that sits so close to the side of a rider's head will likely cause head banging. When that ride also happens to be incredibly rough and have jerky, poorly designed transitions, this problem becomes far more painful. But arguably even more concerning from Vekoma's perspective was that riders were being injured by their restraints when they were either not holding on or were raising their hands as many coaster riders will do. As a result, after 1995, Vekoma redesigned the over-the-shoulder harness, adding soft pads near the head and moulding the shoulder bar to prevent riders from being able to lift their arms, encouraging them instead to hold on to the harness. It didn't work. While the softer pads likely reduced the severity of headbanging injuries, they actually brought the side of the harness even closer to the rider's head, resulting in an increase in the actual amount of headbanging. Back to the drawing board. By the way, while Vekoma tries to fix their trains, why don't you scroll down and click on the subscribe button? It's free, it helps the channel a lot, and you can always unsubscribe later if you feel like it. The next attempt at innovating the SLC train wouldn't actually come from Vekoma. Fellow Dutch manufacturer Comeback designed a train for the SLC which was installed on two coasters, T3 at Kentucky Kingdom and Arkham Asylum at Movie World. These trains featured a vest-style restraint with soft over-the-shoulder straps and a bulkier lap bar. The idea was to mitigate headbanging completely by removing any hard restraint from near the rider's shoulders or head. And while they did prevent headbanging, they were worse. To compensate for the less amount of support on riders' shoulders, Comeback made the lap bar heavier and bulkier, and the problem with that became immediately evident. Due to the combination of the lap bar's less than perfect design and the intense positive g-force of the ride pushing the lap bars downwards during the ride, riders immediately found that the comeback restraints would crush their thighs, often to a painful degree. So while riding an SLC in a comeback train involved no headbanging, the poor transitions were equally painful, as riders were forcefully squeezed across the hips, groin and thighs. Finally, Vekoma managed to somewhat find a solution when they completely redesigned the trains and seat assemblies in 2008, adding their own vest restraint. These feature a soft vest restraint that is slightly bulkier than Comeback's seat belt based design, providing more shoulder support while still avoiding headbanging, and allowing a more lightweight lap bar to therefore be used. By all accounts, these are as good as it gets for SLC trains. The trains are not the only problem though. The SLC's layout is poorly designed, and by Vekoma's own admission, they did not take into consideration the forces that would be put on riders by the ride. The base of the first drop subjects riders to five positive Gs, which is incredibly intense and always likely to be uncomfortable when the trains and restraints are imperfectly designed to support riders through these forces and the track is not perfectly smooth. For comparison, Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion, which is famous for its intensity, only pulls 4.5 Gs. There are other problems too, like the awkward tracking of the rollover and the intense and sudden lateral G-force of the inline twists. Put simply, the SLC layout is too intense, and Vekoma failed to account for those forces and making them comfortable for riders. In an interview given about their new and drastically improved inverted model, the STC, engineers and designers Peter Van Bilsen and Benjamin Blumendahl said that the focus was on creating a thrill ride that could be enjoyed by everyone and would provide a comfortable and smooth ride experience. The design process employs new in-house tools that can calculate and fully account for G-forces, which is something the SLC designers were never capable of doing. This results in what they call a smooth symphony of turns, twists, and inversions. Definitely not how one would describe the old SLC models at all. So, within the first two years of its existence, the SLC was plagued with issues and looked like a failure. But somehow, it wasn't. By the turn of the century, Vekoma had installed 20 SLCs worldwide, and today that number stands at 41. The SLC would become one of Vekoma's most popular models, surpassed only by the Boomerang and the Junior Coaster. So why were they so popular among parks, despite the immediate and resounding negative feedback from riders? The simple answer is cost. And arguably, the SLC's success might be more attributed to B&M than to Vekoma. The inverted coaster is undeniably an eye-catching model. 
They're photogenic, thrilling, and forceful, and parks everywhere wanted one. But B&M's models were top of the line, and far out of most parks' budget. Vacoma, meanwhile, since employing their computer-aided design software, have built their success on being able to design and manufacture their coasters quickly and affordably. So with shorter waiting periods and a much smaller price tag, the SLC was an attractive option for a park looking for an eye-catching new thrill ride, but without the millions to spend on recruiting B&M. Because of this, Vacoma likely didn't see much need, and also probably didn't have time, to solve the problems that the ride was plagued with. They knew it was rough, and they were hearing the complaints, but parks were calling up by the dozens asking for them, and Vacoma simply did what they did best in those days. They produced them en masse. If you need a comparison of how B&M's and Vacoma's business models were essentially opposite at that time, you only need to look at the layouts produced in both models. Of the 41 SLCs produced by Vacoma, only two were custom layouts customized for the park. Great Nor'easter at Maury's Piers, more about that coaster in a moment, and Odyssey at the UK's Fantasy Island. While Vacoma would offer four different extended layouts, the remaining installations were all clone layouts straight off the shelf, bought for minimum design costs, and 27 of them would be the standard layout. B&M, meanwhile, have produced 32 inverted coasters, 18 of them being custom layouts, with only two cloned layout models ever being produced, the Batman and Raptor layouts. B&M were the manufacturer for the parks willing to spend the cash on a ride that was tailor-made for them. And so that is the story of the success of the Vacoma SLC. Possibly the worst coaster model ever produced, but one that found the right market at the right time and sold like hotcakes to parks who wanted an invert, even if it ended up being just a bit rough. So where are they now? The SLC is no longer in production. The last newly built installation was at Vietnam's Asia Park in 2017, and the model has now been phased out in favour of the new STC, Suspended Thrill Coaster, which was first installed at Germany's Trips Drill in 2020. One is now also under construction at Ireland's Emerald Park. But the old SLCs do continue to operate, and while some of them are ruthlessly mocked even by their own parks and by absolutely fire diss tracks, you're just a knockoff B&M, and your future's really dim. Writing views worse than a sin, you're a zero out of ten. No one will win. One or two have managed to salvage something from all the issues that the SLC faces. Perhaps the most well-known is the Great Nor'easter at Maury's Piers in New Jersey. As stated before, this is one of the two customized layouts, and it operates with the new Vacoma vest restraints. And in 2017, the park spent $5 million on completely retracking the ride, with Vacoma utilizing their new and improved computer technology to iron out the imperfections and make the layout as smooth as possible. The ride reopened in mid-2017, celebrating with an ad campaign that claimed the ride was now so smooth your granny could ride it. They held an opening where grandmothers took the first ride alongside park owner Jack Morey in a granny wig and lipstick. The response? It's quite positive. And the Great Nor'easter is widely acclaimed as definitely one of the best of the SLCs. It's proof that there is life in the concept, and after three decades of Vacoma trying their best to find ways to make it bearable, this one seems to have finally gained the public's seal of approval. It's a nice ending. Maybe not every SLC is the absolute worst. I can't stop dreaming about them. I can't get a good night's sleep everywhere I look. It's just SLCs. They're everywhere. They're haunting me. I have to escape this. I just I need some time away. I need to go home. I need to get away from roller coasters for a while. I know just the place. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please click the like button down below. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that you like this type of content, and it also lets me know so that I can make more for you in the future. If you'd like to watch some more videos, just click the links over here. And if you'd like to stick around to see more, make sure you subscribe. I'm just gonna eat my ice cream while I wait for you to pick another video. I can't believe I bought these just to throw one of them on the ground. <laughs>